Battlefield is one of the very few first-person shooters that implement a realistic bullet physics system. There are many factors that come into play when trying to compensate your shot for distance. Today, we are going to dive into the mechanics behind the bullet physics system in Battlefield 5 and give you a better understanding of how the game works. What's going on guys and gals, my name is Shadox. Today, our search for a deeper understanding behind the mechanics of Battlefield brings us to a fairly complicated subject, ballistics. I'm going to attempt to explain everything in a way that even the greenest of players can understand, but there will be some areas that do require a fundamental understanding of the game as well as some physics. As always, feel free to leave your questions down in the comments below or ask me on Twitter and I will do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. That being said, let's get started by taking a look at exactly what kind of a system Battlefield implements for its projectiles. Battlefield 5 uses a realistic, physics-based model for each of its bullets. Once a weapon is fired, the bullet becomes a new object that is spawned and travels through the map. Every server tick, the position, velocity, and acceleration of the bullet are all calculated, and if the bullet's trajectory passes through an object in that server tick, then the bullet will impact that object, whether it is a rock, a vehicle, or a player. This is different than what most other first-person shooters use, as a majority of them use a hit scan system. In this system, a straight line is drawn out from the barrel of the weapon, almost like a laser, and this ray will find the nearest object that impacts it and immediately register a hit at that point. All of this happens what is effectively instantly, and so travel time and physics are not calculated. Alright, so now that we know how Battlefield is different, how does the game calculate the bullet's flight path? Well, there are four main variables that go into these calculations, and they differ from weapon to weapon. These are initial speed, drag, gravity, and time to live. Initial speed is simply the muzzle velocity of the weapon. And those of you who have watched my weapon reviews or my videos showing how to calculate TTK will be familiar with this variable. Initial speed is measured in meters per second and is how far the bullet will travel in one second. Values of initial speed can range from the low 300 meters per second range for some pistols and submachine guns, all the way up to the highest at 860 meters per second for a few self-loading rifles. Drag is the deceleration of the bullet over time. To find the deceleration of the bullet at that instant, you take the velocity squared and multiply it by the drag coefficient. So the faster the bullet is, the more deceleration it will experience. This squared terms makes things a bit tricky when computing trajectories, as the result is no longer linear. The value of drag can change dramatically depending on what type of weapon you're using, from .005 for the SMGs down all the way to .001 for specialized sniper rifles. Next is gravity, and this controls the bullet drop for all the weapons. This value is the same across all the weapons in the game at 12 meters per second squared. Essentially, gravity is the second limiting factor in range, as no matter how high you aim, the bullet will always come down, except when they don't because of the fourth and final variable. Time to live is how long the bullet will remain active after firing. If the bullet is fired and it does not impact anything, be it terrain or a player, the bullet will despawn after a set amount of time. Short range weapons will have a shorter time to live than long range weapons. For example, a bullet fired from a Sten SMG will only stay in the game for one and a half seconds, compared to five seconds for a Krag Jorgensen. This time to live will act as the hard limiter for how far a bullet can travel, so even if you fire at a 45 degree angle, the bullet will disappear before it hits the ground. These four variables, initial speed, drag, gravity, and time to live, all dictate how the projectile behaves after firing. Changing just one of these will have a significant impact on the long-range performance of a weapon. For example, here is a graph showing you the trajectory of a bullet fired from a Krag Jorgensen. It has a muzzle velocity of 700 meters per second, a .0025 drag coefficient, and a 5 second time to live. One of the specializations for this rifle is a reduced drag bullet, and this lowers the coefficient to .001. As you can clearly see, this simple change will get you nearly 600 meters more range out of the rifle, as well as a flatter trajectory out significantly longer. Now that we know about the fundamental variables, what weapon specializations affect bullet trajectory? Well, there are three, high velocity bullets, low drag bullets, and variable zero. 
The high velocity bullets typically will add about 10% to the weapon's initial speed. Now let's take a look at how this affects the trajectory of let's say the MP34 SMG. The weapon's base muzzle velocity is 495 meters per second, a drag coefficient of .005, and a 1.5 seconds time to live. This graph of the bullet's position will show that it barely clears 300 meters before the bullet despawns. Now, if we select the high velocity bullet specialization, we will actually receive two buffs. First, the initial velocity will be increased to 560 meters per second, and the drag coefficient will be reduced to .0035. Looking at this graph, we can see a clear difference between the two, and the weapon's max range is extended by nearly 100 meters, so high velocity bullets raises the initial velocity and decreases drag. The second specialization is low drag round, and only two weapons have access to this specialization the Car 98K and the Krag Jorgensen. Both of these weapons have their base .0025 drag coefficient reduced to .001, a massive change that you can see by these graphs. Now for the last specialization, variable zero, I technically lied. The bullet drop with variable zero remains the same. However, your point of aim is shifted depending on what zero you have it set for. And what this allows you to do is angle your weapon so that the bullet crosses the zero elevation at a specific range. By default, all weapons, even those without access to high power optics, have their zero set for 60 meters. And so the bullet leaves the barrel, goes up for a bit, and then comes back down and crosses your point of aim at 60 meters. The sniper rifles with access to variable zero will allow you to set your zero between 60, 150, and 300 meters. So how can you calculate bullet velocity and bullet drop with respect to range? We might be tempted to use kinematic equations to solve these, and in some cases, like over level ground, you can get fairly close approximations. But there's an issue. Those kinematic equations assume that acceleration is constant. For the vertical direction, this is true but not for the deceleration due to drag. Since the drag is V squared times the drag coefficient, this means that we have jerk, or change in acceleration over time. Our basic kinematics cannot solve this, and unfortunately this leaves us with two options. You can either use differential calculus, or you can click the link in the description to use a calculator that Simthic user Miffy created. The way that I calculated the charts shown earlier was by writing a bit of code that would calculate the position and velocity at the instant the bullet was fired, and then I would step forward in time by one server tick and calculate all the new values. Then I repeated this until the time was equal to the time to live variable from earlier. But for the sake of approximation, let's use the kinematic equations to solve for bullet drop at a specific distance. For this example, we will use the Krag Jorgensen and fire at level at a target 200 meters away. So we separate the projectile into two directions, X and Y. Let's assume that the bullet is fired perfectly level with the horizon, so its initial vertical velocity in the Y direction is zero. All right, to start out, since we are ignoring drag, we can assume that the velocity in the X direction is constant. So we can use this equation, X equals X naught plus V naught times time, to find our time of flight. Our X naught is zero. That's where we started, and x is 200 meters, that's where our target is. So plugging in the muzzle velocity of 700 meters per second will give us a flight time of 0.286 seconds. Okay, since we assume the bullet was fired level initially, this means that we can ignore these two equations here, and then solve for drop directly. If there was an initial angle, then you can use the other two equations to solve for all of your unknowns. Okay, so y equals y naught plus v y naught times time, plus one half gravity times time squared. Vy naught, or initial velocity in the y direction, is zero, and so that term drops out. Since we are just looking for drop, we will also set y naught equal to zero, and our answer will be negative. This just means that the bullet will be lower than where we started. Remember, g in our case is minus 12 meters per second squared, and time is the value that we found previously of 0.286 seconds. Plugging all of this in gives us a total drop of about half a meter, and this is about the distance from the top of the head to the center of the chest. And so now you would be able to use this to compensate for range and be more likely to get a headshot the next time you pull the trigger. Again, this is an approximation. It works okay at ranges below 300 meters for bolt action rifles, but any further than that and the errors will become significant. In the end, does this really matter for the average player? Not really. 
After using a weapon for a short time, you will get the feel for the bullet drop in lead times. And generally, even as a sniper, you'll rarely take shots past 300 meters. But knowing how the game works is still important if you want to build a deeper understanding of the weapon balance, the game overall, and how to choose weapons for the right job. Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. My name is Shadox, and I hope to see you on the battlefield.